Um, <laughs> your wife has such a gross stuff. She, like, she's just like, her face is just like the whole. She's like, this podcast this whole, has been noises. 200,000? You wouldn't do it? No. I'm talking like, it'd be, have to be like a billion. A billion? I mean, listen, gluten and 24-year-old McDonald's. A billion? I need a person's leg for a billion. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> gonna be so mouth noisy i mean if it's too much to handle you got to tell us i just nah, say just let the internet tell you let uh, the internet gross. oh they will what if someone likes the way your mouth sounds when you eat <laughs> and you're gonna have like a what, what's it called like asmr um there's a whole channel of dave just like <laughs> it's chipotle <laughs> asmr the sound of like rice and guac and i say we just we're in we're going Let's do it. All right. So today we're talking about Chipotle. And now this is something that's been a part of our lives, honestly, for a long time. But I'm going to look up real quick the name of the person who actually founded Chipotle. His name is uh, Stephen Ells. I'm, and I'm going uh, for is that it, pronounced by the way. properly? It's I think e -L it's Ells. Ells. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know him. So we thought it'd be kind of fun after doing the Mr. Beast podcast where we just ate a bunch of chocolates, tested it out. It seemed like an easy. Um, podcast to do. So today we're going to actually try some Chipotle while we talk about the business of Chipotle. And hopefully we find a little bit of inspiration. And we're going to get, uh, I'm, I'm sure multiple times during this, we're going to have food in our teeth. So you oh. got to tell us. Yeah. So this podcast isn't really for anybody who's listening. It's completely for <laughs> me. I just want to eat Chipotle and make sponsorship money. So now this is not sponsored by Chipotle. It's sponsored by my belly. <laughs> yeah. This is sponsored by us wanting Chipotle. How come your name's on it? They didn't put my name on mine. So I did something smarter than you did today. Oh, did you uh, online order? Yes. <clears throat> as soon as you told me that the line was crazy, I did online order because they prioritize online orders over the person who's standing there in person, which, which is bothers weird. me. I watched a few shorts on that very thing. Our experience over the past 10 years of eating at Chipotle has honestly been fairly good up until kind of the pandemic times. Our production company, Green Shoe Creative, was a few blocks away from a Chipotle. And it I already spilled on myself. Did you? Okay. Well, good. It became an addiction for us. Uh, yeah. And every we, single day, I mean, we spent thousands of dollars a year at Chipotle. We did a lot of business over uh, bowls of rice oh, yeah. and beef. Like clients, we take them to Chipotle. and But even just like, like planning discussing situations oh, sure. we'd, we'd go and talk it over everybody over knew our names there yeah. you know there's that that sense of like cheers you know where everybody <laughs> yeah. knows they did and they didn't when they saw us coming they probably just rolled their eyes like what's wrong with these guys Gosh, it's just like you guys i looked at the budget you're spending two thousand a month <laughs> on chipotle well and then uh yeah and i don't think i ever i think they have a loyalty program like a rewards program i don't think i ever signed up for it oh my gosh we should have I bet you Irene did secretly. Oh, I've been cashing in on free bowls for years. Are you See, serious? Oh, yeah, buddy. So we I, we would buy it, and you'd run it through your... <laughs> See, I don't think I uh, get lunch at the salon all these days. She's smarter than I am. <laughs> Clearly. I've known that for a long time. <laughs> okay, so... Well, also, really quick. Uh, yeah. Also, like, with all the touring that we've done for Ilya's shows and stuff, my wife is a, a musician, and actually, we're all musicians and, mm -hmm. and performers, but, um, oh, that's so good. we would always like, it, it's always really consistent. Like there's minor variations right. between different locations, but like when we're on the road or we go, you know, States away, I feel like Chipotle is always reliable. It's always been reliable for us. We can stop in and we can eat and we all have kind of like some degree of dietary restrictions where right. we're trying to avoid um, a lot of us trying to avoid gluten, a lot of us trying to avoid dairy. Um, and because it's build your own and because it's all, you know, uh, really good, healthy ingredients, it's been a good option for us. Agreed. And honestly, from a lot of my friends who were on the road, I had some friends that were on the road for 10 years straight and they would eat kind of just whatever was around uh, McDonald's, Culver's, they'd eat a lot of pizza. And honestly, they would just get diarrhea the entire time. <laughs> Not not to talk about diarrhea when we're eating something that looks like <laughs> diarrhea, but like they would get diarrhea all the time and, and be really sick. And then they'd get hemorrhoids. And then, have to, and then no, have to perform. They'd get hemorrhoids and then try to go up and act like a rock star. Like you got and diarrhea. Have to sit and, in the yes. bus. For, yeah, gross. <laughs> and the, the thing is, is they would just get sick, the bad food, bad timing, always sitting down on tour buses. And uh, they started doing a lot of Chipotle and they felt way more healthy. And then, no, it's not perfect. 
but it's something that's like, no, when I go there, I can get pretty healthy chicken. So <clears throat> it was formed in, which I didn't know this, 1993 by Stephen Ells. And yeah, it's like 30 years old. For some reason, I felt like it was a new thing when uh, we started in like 2012. So, well, we were late to the game. It kind of still was, you know, on a really big scale anyway. Well, tell me some of the financials, like what they're doing right now. And I can get in some of the history. Yeah, because it was uh, 2005 when they reached 500 locations. So I would say like that's pretty big time commercial success <laughs> by any measure. Five, yeah, 500, yeah, 500 locations. 500 locations great. That's probably when it felt like to a lot of people like, oh, Chipotle is a legitimate like national brand. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about that with music all the time, you know, where it, someone seems like an overnight success when they've been maybe regionally a really big deal for a while. But, mm-hmm. Well, it um, started off in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Um, Steven went to school, I think, to be a historian or history major. I think towards the end of his school, he had always been interested in making food. Well, he was always cooking for his friends and his friends, uh, his roommate said, why don't you just go to school for this? And he was like, well, that would be wonderful. I just, I'll go to school and I, I love to cook. So maybe something I'll be a little bit more passionate about instead of history. Cause even his dad was like, what are you going to do with a history degree? You're going to be a professor. You're going to write books. And he's like, I don't know. So he went to culinary school, did really good. Um, and I think he fell in love with just the high end, you know, almost the, the, almost like a fashion type thing where it's like the the plate looks beautiful as well as it tastes wonderful. The place is beautiful. And it's all about, well, you can't get in for two months. He wanted a restaurant like that. And so he had an idea of like, what if I open up a store that could kind of fund that? I need to be able to afford that. That's, you know, maybe half a million dollars to start a place like this. I don't have the money. And in 93, it's a lot of money. So it's supposed to be like a stepping stone. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Chipotle was really sort of like a means to an end. Correct. And he wanted to build a place where... Um, he was inspired by local, excuse me, here, it's already starting. Oh man, you got the Chipotle burps? I got the Chipotle burps. It's a thing. (laughs) Um, That rumbled in my ears. Yeah, I'm sorry. It had a little bit of bass to it, didn't it? Uh Um, I'm a little impressed. No, thank you. not even Uh, mad. I'm impressed. (laughs) Uh, What was I talking about? Uh, You were talking about, I mean, what was he talking about? I said it was a stepping stone. That was really distracting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. We were talking about Chipotle. Mm. Thanks, Dave. How he was... uh, um, It was a stepping stone for him. He wanted to open this like big fancy guy restaurant. Right. The idea was to start a place where it it was simple and healthy ingredients made in front of people. Because at that point in time, fast food was you just drove up, they threw something at you, you were out in 30 seconds. You knew what you were eating was kind of bad for you, but you didn't care because it tasted well. And he thought, well, let's... What if we have... Really healthy ingredients, but a, a limited amount. There is like a a thing with us humans. If we have too many options, yeah. we throw our hands up and we just don't care. And so he thought, well, let's just have burritos. Let's have <clears throat> bowls. Let's have, you know, guac. Just like really simple ingredients. And he said, I want to make it to where I don't have to be there that much because I can be working on my other restaurant. So he designed the place to run basically by itself with a few people. And he thought in the beginning, he said, all right, we'll put it near campus a college campus in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he got a small 800 square foot location. that was kind of junk. And in order to open the place up, he went to his father and said, dad, I, I need a little bit of money. And his dad believed in him and obviously supportive and loaned him throughout a small period of time around 80 to $85,000. But what's interesting is they didn't really have enough money to make it look fancy. And the idea was to just kind of grab some barn siding, some plywood, um, some pipes, and make everything out of that, which is the iconic look mm-hmm. of Chipotle. The uh, the thought was, let me look up some of the stats. He needed, in the first location in Denver, Colorado, he needed 107 burritos per day to make a little bit of profit. That's what was required uh, to make just enough to save some money. Uh, he, he opened, so basically that would be, uh, you're, he's open around eight, 12 hours. He thought that'd be around eight or so an hour, eight plus burritos an hour is what he which, thought. Which also, well, never mind, go ahead. Well, go the ahead. point is, is like, that's what he's hoping. No one's ever heard of this place, a Mexican grill place by this white guy. And he's hoping to make, you know, eight burritos an hour. That's not, it's not a stretch, but like, nobody knows who you are. 
I think I, 107 burritos per day is what he needed. He ended up doing a thousand burritos wow. a day. Jeez. Yeah. 80 some plus an hour. So he wanted to hit. So with that's within the first few months. And that's one location? That's one location. And, and mm. you think about it. This is around the time when people are really thinking about health. Excuse me. And then, man, I've got these Chipotle bursts. <laughs> I'm so sorry to anybody listening. Um, he, he knew that, you know, being next to campus was good, uh, but people- Brilliant. It's brilliant. In fact. Yes. And for me- Because I want to I talk about that uh, You know, bit, take, take a moment, because I haven't got to eat. I want to eat some. I've got Actually, I've, I've been enjoying just yeah. letting you go, because I've just been sitting here eating. <laughs> Mine's getting cold. Tell me a little bit why it's brilliant. And so- Well, I just, so there's a lot of fitness folks that really like Chipotle. Mm -hmm. Do you need a moment? <laughs> Your wife's right For those over just there, listening, so. I'm having a spiritual moment over here <clears throat> with my Chipotle bowl. It's uh, a good day. I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. I've eaten a lot of Chipotle with him. Mm -hmm. You're used to it too, Irene. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I wasn't listening at we'll all. Just give you, we'll, we'll just give you a few minutes. Um, no, I, so uh, Chipotle bowls in particular are this really great combination of um, quite a bit of calories, um, but they're pretty good, healthy calories. Like it's, it's good, um, nutrient rich, uh, proteins and, and carbs and, and everything else that's in there, depending on, I guess how you build it. But, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that, you know, it's their like post-workout meal. Really? And, uh, you know, that's, I would say. That's seems... going to be my excuse. I'm going to go work out for two minutes. <laughs> I need a post-workout meal. It was mine for a long time and it's, it, uh, sorry it to everybody who's listening. I'm opening up some chips. Oh, no. You're going to be chomping away. Oh, they, they burnt these. <laughs> oh, my God. They sort of... That seems like a combo. Yeah. There's a couple of different batches. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm just... It, it seems to... Like, I'll see bodybuilders online all the time that are eating Chipotle. It just sort of meets the nutritional needs of uh, a meal on, a go, in, on the go in ways that... Fast food doesn't. And, uh, well, sometimes I've gone in and just got lettuce and double chicken. Yeah. Because I need, I feel like I sure. need a protein. I need something good. But um, I, but it's like, um, there's a lot of college students that are focused on their health. They're focused on their fitness. They have the time for it. Um, even though it may not feel like it. And they're like used it, to also but, walking around. Yeah. Like they, they drive through, most kids don't take a car to college, if I'm right. correct. And they just walk around. And then Chipotle, a couple blocks away, you just walk in. Well, and that's, uh, <clears throat> that's, that was something that I, uh, in re researching this noticed and thought was kind of funny was like um, they resisted always uh, like any kind of drive through option. Um, we can, you're probably, we're going to get to this. I'm, let me jump ahead. Let me, um, let me <clears throat> jump ahead and just mention that they were actually Chipotle was, was uh, helped a lot by McDonald's oddly enough. Um, Which when I learned this, I was just instantly like, ugh. <laughs> like we're going to Chipotle to not, to go, to not go to McDonald's. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I think McDonald's tastes great when it's warm. The fries are fantastic. But as soon as it dips over into like lukewarm, there's instantly a, tastes like cardboard. Yeah. There's a sharp threshold. Yes. That, uh, like you fall so off that cliff. I felt betrayed. I'm like, what the, <clears throat> you know, you know what? McDonald's is a major owner. So go ahead. Continue. So in 1998, so kind of early on, I guess that would have been what, five years in business. Yeah. They um, only had 16 locations at that time. They had 16 locations in Denver. Um, oh shoot. In Denver. Yeah. I didn't realize that. And I, I assume in and around Denver, but McDonald's invested $360 million. And during that time they pushed, especially in the later years, they, they pushed um, for Steve Ells to like implement drive throughs at many of the locations. Really? Yeah, they really wanted mm -hmm. to do I'm that. sorry, someone gave me $360 million and be like, how many drive throughs do you <laughs> want? I'll put one in my house. <laughs> well, so, but I think that that's been... Which that sounds fun. They deliver me food at my drive through drive through That's actually brilliant. For, it's for um, Uber Eats. Let's start a home drive through installation Yeah, Uber service. Eats just pulls up to that window. They hand you the food. You convert your... Your uh, your garage to like a oh, just, love it. You drive right through it, sort of a car wash situation. We could convert. Oh, this we, could, good. we could convert to a drive through and car wash combo. Hmm. You just don't do them at the same time. Irene, are you eating as well, or are you watching us eat? Just watching. Is it awful do you watching have, us eat? Your, is your food upstairs? I ate half of it. I'm on a mom schedule. I can inhale a bowl in five seconds. <laughs> so. 
That is true. She eats stuff. I'm like, did you chew that at all? I must have been on mom's schedule for years then when I eat Chipotle. I'm telling you guys, this boy, <clears throat> Dave, you eat Chipotle so fast normally. This, it's like him being dainty I'm, and trying yeah. to be nice. I'm on camera. I got to... Normally I do, I just shovel it in. I it's usually it. me talking and then Dave's done in like 12 minutes. And I'm like, how did you eat that? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I feel strange. <laughs> like I'm used to like breaks and like school. Anyways, I interrupted. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. So McDonald's invested $360 million in 1998. They fully divested and pulled out of the company in 2006. And they took out $1.5 billion. So <clears throat> they did pretty well on their money. It was a good investment. Damn. Yeah. Um, damn, but Steve Ells resisted the whole drive through thing. And I think that that was a wise move. I think that, um, that Chipotle has always been categorized as, um, uh, fast casual mm -hmm. in terms like of, that. in terms of like, you know, a fast food type establishment, they call it fast casual. And I think that that captures what it is. I mean, you get in, you get out, but you can, but they have like a lot of dining and, and it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a fast food restaurant. I think that was really wise of him to kind of stay true to the brand, true to their, their, um, value that they were offering the clients. And it, it kept it, I think, from becoming McDonald's essentially. So, but who at McDonald's, were, were they just seeing how people were wanting more health conscious things and McDonald's wasn't that, and they couldn't really change McDonald's to that without hurting the brand, just buy in, invest and sit back and let this guy do the work. Um, but was, was the drive through one of the reasons why they bailed? I don't know. Business needs change. I mean, if you can get one and a half billion out of a three hundred and sixty million dollar investment, yeah, it's like well, all right. Into McDonald's, that's chump change. Yeah, they make that in coffee probably in a month. We should look into that. We got to do McDonald's sometime. Uh, I mean, do me a favor while we're eating. Do a little bit of research just to see how much McDonald's makes in coffee per month. Just, I just want to see. <clears throat> but, so, go um, ahead. I'm sorry. Let me chew in the mic for a mm -hmm. second, and then talk numbers. Modern day, though, uh, looking at like 20, 2022 numbers, just shy of 3,200 locations Wow! across multiple countries, the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, France. Total 2022 revenue was about eight and a half billion. That's that, a lot of chicken. <laughs> yeah. Total assets, just shy of seven billion. Uh, again, as of 2022, their number of employees is just under 105,000, which is like, that's a big company. Very big. Um, well, yeah. at one point in time, I looked into, well, can I buy into a franchise? And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it's not a lot to set up. What does it cost? That's they they the, don't do it. That's the, They don't do franchising. Interesting. They that's did for a little bit. And they're good like, for us, nope. though, because that's the last thing that we all need. <laughs> we would just eat all your ingredients. I'd be 500 pounds. Welcome to the public. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're out of everything. <laughs> but you can feed my addiction. But I can assure you it was delicious. <laughs> um, so, I mean, do you have any facts? Oh, she got some facts about uh -oh. McDonald's. McDonald's revenue from coffee sales alone is in excess of $1.3 million a day. It is estimated to be about the McCafe brand generates about $4 billion in annual sales in the U.S. Oh, my God. That three hundred fifty dollars so, million was chump change to them. Yeah, so <clears throat> probably close to forty million a month or something. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of story. It's crazy. <clears throat> this goes to show how much money McDonald's has. <clears throat> I wonder where I, they're getting those beans from. That roasted coffee. I mean, they probably. I wonder if they're roasting it themselves. They probably. Should. I think they're just taking old tires, chewing it up, baking it. Sm making it smell like coffee. And then pour over. <laughs> pour over. Pour over yeah. those old I've tires. actually had some decent coffee from there once in New York City. I got one and I was like, oh, this is actually decent. Um, it's always too hot. I've always said it's way too hot. You it can't is. drink it for a long time. What you got? <clears throat> Gavinia is the coffee supplier for McDonald's. Damn, how'd Brazil, you find that? Colombia, that quick? Guatemala, and Costa Rica. Because I'm a wizard. <laughs> Irene's the wizard. Bonafide wizard. Mm. I don't know if you noticed, but this is a really hard podcast to stay focused for me. I forgot I'm on the podcast. I just am eating the food. <laughs> we'll just take a minute. <clears throat> but it's really impressive um, the amount of money that McDonald's has. We were in Chicago for an event that had to do with um, salons. My wife owns a salon. So we get there at this, I believe it was like a Hyatt Hotel. Was it something like that? 
We go in the Hyatt Hotel, and I'm like, why is there McDonald's art everywhere? I'm like, this is a little odd. This is where? It was, it was in Chicago. Okay. And I'm like, I look at the wall. I was like, there's McDonald's art there. I was like, this is a weird like product placement. Why are they trying to like brainwash us to get the McDonald's up the street? And then anyways, I'm in the room, and I realized that the carpet has McDonald's on like a symbol in a few corners. And then I realized the handles are like McDonald's M's. And I'm like, first were you in a commercial? Oh, dude, I didn't know. You were like, I was living like, what McDonald's kind of weird commercial? matrix is this where everything is like subliminally McDonald's. And then we go down to the pool and at the bottom of the pool, there's an M and I'm like, what the hell is going on with all this McDonald's stuff? Well, what had happened was <clears throat> McDonald's sold their headquarters, their training headquarters in adjacent to all that location, there was massive, like three, like the three buildings, these massive buildings where the, the main headquarters was. And then catwalks were going over to, they had their own full hotel with hundreds and hundreds of rooms, an entire workout place with saunas, spas, and all this stuff. And then you go down just a little bit, there's an entire training facility. We're talking about a campus of like several hundred acres in Chicago. Wow. And we're like, I'm like, what is going on? It was their old headquarters that they had sold to Paul Mitchell, the guy who, um, Paul Mitchell hair. And <clears throat> we were just like, holy heck, this is their old place and it's gigantic. <clears throat> so, so they converted was, it to a hotel? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So okay. when they sold it off, the people in order to pay the taxes put up a hotel. Wow. I'm sorry for so many burps. I haven't had rice like this in a while. <clears throat> Look, I'm really uh, looking forward to this show evolving into a food show. So you got to get it together so, so that uh, we don't just run people off. You can't be burping on a show. Irene, what's the campus? Look that up just a little bit, some of the details, and we'll put it on. I was just impressed with how big it was. It was so big. So presumably they added the pool when it was converted to a hotel, right? Like they didn't have that as part of their headquarters no, already? they did. They did? They had a whole hotel to, as people were coming into town, they oh, okay. put them. There's a training facility. So what they would do is they bring people in for training, mm. like managers and such. Yeah. They train in this big, huge facility, and then they just walk across a, a beautiful bridge over to a nice hotel branded with like McDonald's M's everywhere and like everything you can think of. I'm just like, this is nice. And I mean, I, I've never seen like a headquarters that nice. Um, All right. Well, so- are you saying Chipotle needs to step up their game? Is that what we're getting Chipotle at here? Chipotle needs to step up Chipotle their needs game. a hotel. They need a whole training campus. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have one, and we instead know about McDonald's and not theirs. But um, while the wizards back there looking things up, um, you shall not. It just pass. Uh, it just seems like a weird combination: Chipotle and McDonald's. And yeah. at some point in time, they realized that their businesses didn't mash, so they wanted to split ways. Yeah, but maybe that's why it worked because they were different enough. You know, like I think so. Well, the things that they could have learned from McDonald's. McDonald's knows how to deliver products. They know real estate. McDonald's yeah. is he, one of some of the biggest real estate owners in the world. And I'll bet you he, they trained him on that. They trained him on how to properly set up systems. I mean, it wasn't until I believe he had like his uh, the investment from McDonald's where then he put together a real business plan. And how do we how do we make this work? We can't just hope it all you know works out really well. Uh, with having fresh ingredients made then and there, they had to get the process down. And so, what better person to learn from than the process kings, McDonald's? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it seems though that <clears throat> um, one of the big wins for Chipotle has been to do something that that McDonald's for most of its. Uh, existence didn't seem to really prioritize or publicize at least, which is healthy ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, you know, Chipotle is all about, they'll say locally sourced or, or, you know, organic ingredients on and on, but they really um, kind of have, have as, as a part of their brand, they have promoted this idea that they put good stuff on your, on your plate. And then it almost became part McDonald's of the culture. that no, way. no. McDonald's was where you went when you wanted to like shamefully eat <laughs> something in the middle of the night and you well, just, in, you know, again, we should, we should do a show on McDonald's, but I, I think that maybe it wasn't always that way. Mm -mm. I think it's sort of, it was a time where they drifted from kind of the local diner, grill a burger, like more genuine food to maybe 
fast food. They're sort of that fast food process pioneers. Sure. And then I think they had to kind of pump the brakes. Well, remember that one guy who did that thing where he only ate McDonald's for 30 days and he got really, really sick. Yeah. And was, this, that, was, that, was that Michael Moore? That wasn't It him. wasn't him. <clears throat> no. I'm struggling here. Because I, haven't had the, I haven't had cheese like this in a while. Um, but what's interesting about McDonald's is the CEO at that time of when, I, when I'm talking about this was a guy who came up from like working in McDonald's as a kid to mm. where he ended up going through the whole ranks. And McDonald's is pretty good at promoting internally because you know the brand, you know the how things are going, you know how it works on the line to where the CEO was like, I get what you're saying, buddy, but like we have other choices. And so he did a thing where he did, a, it was either 30 days or 60 days of only eating McDonald's, but he chose the salads. He chose okay. the fresh chicken. He didn't eat the, you know, the 1400 calorie, you know, Mick, whatever. Big yeah. Big Mac. He's like, you also don't have to have soda every single meal. You can get water. You can get lemonade. You can get, you know, so his point was we have things that people can eat that are healthier, but nobody comes to McDonald's to eat that. They, <clears throat> yeah. But at Chipotle, I think people do come to order the healthy stuff and it is delicious. It is delicious. Like I think probably I could eat this bowl maybe for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I would get much of what I needed to sustain myself. Not not the rest of my life. That's an exaggeration. But like you get I could eat bowl after bowl after bowl of mm -hmm. this um for a long time and and have, you know, the calorie requirements and nutrient requirements that I need to keep going. Well, and it became such a popular thing online, 2010, 2012. Do you remember Vine? Yeah, the kid. Yeah, the kid. And you know, so anyways, I got the video. I'm gonna play it real quick. <laughs> Like if I mean everybody Chipotle see that. My life. The thing about this kid is that he did so much for the brand because what it was was like this kid was making fun of girls. Like every every basic girl was like, oh my god, Chipotle, Chipotle is my life. And then people started like remaking that video, doing versions of it, to where that kid brought millions of dollars of free advertisement that they actually have a Chipotle is my life bowl. What's and in it? It is, let me see. Let me find it real quick. The Chipotle is my life bowl. Um, it recreates the meal he was eating deer in the video. Okay. <laughs> Double white rice, black beans, chicken, um, red salsa. That's close to what my wife And that's basically what I have. Roasted chili corn. Ugh, salsa, I don't like that stuff. Sour cream and cheese. So it's basically mine without the sour cream and cheese and um, <clears throat> the, the corn. But his name is Roy Miller. And so he, re he received a Chipotle um, celebrity card, which basically gives him free food for the rest of his life. I feel like <clears throat> you don't meet a lot of kids named Roy. Well, this kid is Roy, and he is royalty when it comes to Chipotle. I see what you it did fits. there. Well played. Yeah. Royalty. Um, what's interesting, though, uh, he later on did a TikTok many years later, kind of saying Chipotle still is my line. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just think him. it's funny. Some kid with a little bitty, you know, personality now has free Chipotle. Watch him hate Chipotle because he gets it for free all the time. Um, I'm curious, um, different, different line of thinking here. I'm curious how long Subway has been around because it's similar <clears throat> in terms of the experience, you know, like coming up to the, the, the line where you can walk through all the ingredients are right there. Either they're, they're like your meal is built for you. Cause that's one of the things for me that I think has been, uh, you know, that I've come to really appreciate with Chipotle is that you can kind of guide them through making the perfect meal for you. You can try different, you know, approaches. But their selection is so limited. I know. You feel <clears throat> like you're getting more than you do. You can handle it. Brown rice, white rice. Th th okay, that's what you start off with. You know, <laughs> do you want a burrito bowl? It's like two options. Do you want steak or do you want chicken? Do you want veggies? Do you want, you know, like, it's just like- They, they sort of take you down the, the path. And you down can the funnel. craft it exactly how you want it. So Subway was founded in 1965. Um, so it had been around for quite a while before Chipotle came out. And so, the, yeah, it would have been a, clearly a, a pretty easy business model to, to copy. But it's also, <clears throat> how do you, I don't know how often you eat it like a Qdoba or- um, I'm I not a fan I, of Qdoba. I think there's maybe a couple other places that are kind of- 
I kind of follow the, I would say Qdoba and Chipotle. They were pretty similar. Mo's. Qdoba. Mo's is what I was thinking yeah, about. Yeah, Mo's, Mo's is better. Qdoba, to me, it's like I was eating Rice Krispie Street, like Snap Crackle Pops with the rice. It's always crunchy to me. I never oh, liked it. Oh, yeah. So That's maybe what, like quality control was not I mean, bar. I don't think they have any control. It's just like burning some rice and charging too much. <laughs> It is interesting though, because it, it is the same experience um, on the surface in, in those three locations. You all, you, you go through the line, the food's like in the containers, they scoop it out, you get your burrito, you get your bowl, you get whatever. And, uh, but I definitely feel better after eating Chipotle compared to Moe's, compared to, I would say Kidoba's like a, the, the in-between. Well, I think it was early on. Well, when I think once he he grew to a certain point, Stephen actually went out to see where these pigs and these cows were being raised. For what? For the food. Like they actually was, for he was his going food to, or yeah, the other for, places? for the food of oh. Chipotle, where he was ordering the food from. And he just was flabbergasted. He's like, some of these pigs have never been outside. They're just crammed in these little barns, fed water or fed food, thrown water, and they just live where they poop. And it's just like he he was like, nope, we're not doing that anymore. And so they moved to where they're like paying a premium price for farmers who raise their cows and everything outside just free to roam within a large, you know, because like a pig is going to be much healthier if it's got 100 acres to roam on with, a, a, you know, 4,000 other ones versus trying to shove them all into these really convenient barns. And- that's something I think that plays a role in it. And it's like if you have a pig and a cow that's having a healthy, like stress, you know, list life, they live a full life. The food does taste better. It's it's healthier for us. <clears throat> and so sourcing a lot of the products in a healthy way, I mean, because like they, they had some issues with like salmonella. Right. Um, and that was a big deal. I mean, their stock price dropped tremendously because of that. Well, so pause on that really quick. Yeah. That was in researching for this. That was one of the things that sort of stood out to me. And I don't know if that's typical. I assume it is typical. Honestly, if you follow any restaurant chain over the years, I'm sure there's, there's a, that's right. I got my, I got a whole bag. Um, I'm sure it is a long list of outbreaks and foodborne illness issues and, you know, different health department violations and things. But um, I was kind of surprised by the amount of pretty highly publicized, uh, Incidents that Chipotle has had to work through when it comes to that kind of stuff. Well, because it's it's publicly traded. A lot of places, like um, is it Hindenburg Research? I'm not saying they shorted them, but what they'll do is they'll find that there's something going wrong with Salmonella, and what they'll do is they'll quickly write a report, release it, having shorted the stock. Uh-huh. I'm not going to get into what shorting the stock is. Look it up, but they'll short the stock. Isn't that sort of like a like an insider trading sort of scenario. I mean, like the, I would, if they have the ability to impact the stock price to that level. I, I think it should be illegal, but they do it anyways. Wow. What they'll do is they'll have their research done and then they publicly put it out. They'll spend a lot of money. They'll do advertisement. They'll do whatever it is to just take the stock. Because what, what they're basically doing is they're, they're shorting the stock and then it tanks. Then they're able to sell it at the, the, the price before. And so they're making bukus of money. Now, I'm not saying it's him and Hindenburg that did it, but people do that. And I feel like that's part of it. With being publicly traded, it, it gets all over the news because, first off, it's a popular place. People love it. Oh, my gosh, Chipotle. In fact, excuse me. I remember at one point in time, there was someone on, I think it was either YouTube or Vine that was saying, I'm suing Chipotle for giving me salmonella. And what I'm suing them for is a lifetime supply of Chipotle. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's like, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, it says a lot for the you know, brand affinity of their customers that, um, and that's kind of my point that there's a long list of issues that they've had yeah. with foodborne illness. And yet it hasn't seemed to slow them down. Mm-mm. Um, doesn't it's, slow me down. No, I, <laughs> I was, I just read it and, uh, here I am, but like it, it shows, I, I think that their food is really good, yes. that people really, um, appreciate the ingredients and what's being offered and they're willing to not worry so much. And, and maybe they have a great PR team. Right. I don't you know, well, to address that. I believed in them so much <clears throat> that at one point in time when there was a, a salmonella outbreak and I saw the stock happen before, it may have been, not been salmonella. It was something else. I bought a bunch of stock. It's several thousand, maybe two or three thousand. Salmonella. It would maybe been two or $3,000. And I just waited like five months and it went back up. And I believe I made like 5,000 bucks off of just 
a you dip. could buy a lot of Chipotle for that. Uh, I did. I I thought to myself, it was worth it with the amount of money I've spent at Chipotle. I wanted to make some money off of Chipotle, and so I did. Um, but what's interesting, uh, what, you brought your bag in and you turned it around. At first, I was like, no, you got to face it forward. But then it's like, the only ingredients that's hard to pronounce at Chipotle is Chipotle. <laughs> and I would agree. <clears throat> when I, I found. Oh, Siri's trying to listen to me. Here they are. Um, 53 50. real ingredients. That goes, dude, For you can source better food if you have less. Tomatillo is sometimes hard to pronounce. Thank you for not saying tomatillo. <laughs> tomatillo? Tomatillo. So my wife, uh, she's Hispanic, and so she'll laugh at me for saying things, and uh, like tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Sorry, my mouth's full, but I had to interrupt. You know, this guy is not Hispanic. He mm. doesn't have, you know, any kind of Mexican heritage that, that we could find. Nope. But he started a Mexican restaurant. Right. Which is, uh, it's, you know, publicly traded as Chip Chipotle Mexican Grill. Right. Um, and he's just this <clears throat> white guy who, honestly. Kind of interesting. But he loved, like, the food stands. He loved the process of how they made the food and, and making it in front of people. I mean. So he loved it, became a student of yeah, of that style of food, and I guess, and and apparently, uh, it was pretty good at selling it. Yeah, and going back to the very beginning, he started this as a side hustle to raise money to get his, his big fancy dining, red yeah. restaurant, and then it blows up. He's making billions of dollars off something he wasn't quite expecting, and I'm wondering, is there something to that when you've set it the bar kind of low in your heart and in your mind that like, look. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Let's just- You don't have all the pressure. Yeah. Like, oh my God, if this if this fails, everybody's going to think of me as a failure. Oh my God, you know. I, and, you, and then you take more of a precautionary route versus just like, I don't know, screw it. Let's try to get the best ingredients instead of trying to price things out just perfectly. If anything, that was something that was some point of contention was how much they were spending on food with McDonald's. They were like, you know, you can source better stuff this way. It'll be cheaper. But they're like, no, it's it's like too preserved. I mean, like they're baking and making the chicken and everything right there in front of you. And I'm sure they deep freeze the, the stuff. But like for the most part, it feels healthy. <clears throat> in a lot of cases when it comes to food, if you go the route of, you know, either organic or, or the whole locally sourced thing, um, farm to table kind of stuff, uh, there are instances where certain you know, certain regulations don't apply. And, uh, you know, it sounds like it's a little fuzzy as to whether that was the case in some of these, um, some of these instances, but the opportunity was there. It sounds like, well, they also have the opportunity <clears throat> to turn the damn music down. I swear to mm -hmm. God, <clears throat> when I go to Chipotle, I can't hear my brain think. Half Is it because we're old? I don't know because I remember the first time I went to Chipotle. It was I've in a bigger city. I've always felt that way for years. It's oh, yeah. too loud. It's like the Abercrombie and Fish. Yeah, I was, yes. Hollister. I went into, I think it was like 12, 14 years ago, whatever it was. I went into my first Chipotle. I was like, what is this place? And why is the music so loud that they're like, what you want? I'm like, I have no clue. It's like. I think that that is sometimes location specific. It's it like really is. With like different our management. town, it's like way quieter, yeah. way more relaxed. Some places um, it's a little much. I will say this though. I sent it to a corporate letter into Chipotle because they're supposed to be known for actually responding. And I was like, I've been to Chipotle all over the United States. And this is not a lie. I've had it. New York, Chicago. I've had it. Um, I think I may have even had it once out of country. I'm not 100% All certain. throughout the Midwest, though. All sure. throughout the Midwest. Um, West Coast, I had, I've had i had it in LA. I had it in, or well, not LA. Where was it? San Diego that one time? San Diego. I mean, just everywhere. Hundreds of locations in my life. And I was like, this one here in East Peoria, Illinois, is the best location. <laughs> like, I, the rice is always like, on point. Everything was happening. It was this one particular, like, girl um, who's the manager and you, Carissa, Carissa, you, you went to school with her and I was like, I don't know what she she's doing. She's a, I don't think she's there. Anymore. No, yeah. I was like, I don't know I don't what, know what she she's went. doing, but like everything's clean always. She everything's, didn't put up with any nonsense. She didn't put up with any shit. <laughs> and I was like, someone needs to like give this woman more money or reward. I was like, I'm telling Maybe you. Maybe they did. Maybe that's why she's not there. I hope so. Way but, to go. Well, she did. Well, I doubt it because I didn't receive a response, but I was very like this. I'm telling you is the best one out of all of them. And the, but anyways, COVID happened. Here's people need to do that more often though. I just want to point that out that like, 
if you are getting an exceptional experience with any brand or with any business, like mm-hmm. tell, tell them about it. You know, yeah. so often these places hear uh, negative reviews or they hear when people call it a complain. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes a difference for sure. Like when, when, and you may underestimate even how big of a difference it can make uh, for in a variety of ways, whether that's yeah. like, you know, income for certain individuals, bonuses, or whether it's just, you know, how they feel about their job. But, um, you know, it's good for when people are doing good things for a company, it's good for the company to a know. A thousand percent. But go on. Um, Sorry. No, I was just going to say, but over COVID, man, something's happened to Chipotle. I don't know if it's like not able to staff people or whatever it is, but I would even say with like the bowls, they used to be thicker and they didn't leak near as much. Mm. Um, something over COVID happened where they changed with the supplier. Um, it got quite a bit more expensive too. Well, right? it's stupidly expensive. And here's one of the things that I, I had a bone kind of to pick with Chipotle. And Did you write them a letter? No, um, but I got out of investing in their stocks. I don't, that didn't hurt them, I'm sure. But I they didn't, didn't, I didn't believe, them anymore, and believe in them anymore. Because hear, hear me out. I was listening to an earnings call. And part of the thing was, well, the, the narratives that they were saying to everybody else, well, everything's so expensive. Prices are so high. That's why Chipotle prices have gone so high. Which that's kind of the, that's been the messaging for a lot of organizations. Right, right. Over the last but couple a years, lot yeah. of people don't understand that when they make contracts with some of these suppliers, they're like three to five year contracts where you agree to a certain price that even if the prices go down, they continue to pay that price. But if they go up, they continue to pay that price. And so Chipotle at one point in time was basically saying on an earnings call, this is great. We're able to charge more money. We're it, able to charge more money because of inflation, because yeah. of this, but our actual costs are still the same. And I'm like, that's lying. Right. That's lying to the public and acting like, well, things are so expensive. <clears throat> and I think that that was rampant though. I really do it was, think there's oh, a lot of companies, unfortunately, that were, were doing that yeah. in a variety of ways. And you know, some places they were paying more people more money. They're 15 bucks an hour to go work at a Chipotle in some place. I'm like that, tell me that's why it's more expensive. I'm on with that. I was like that guy back there making the chickens, making more money, not going straight to the fat cats. And you know, I was an investor. I honestly got off that call and I was like, screw this. I'm done. And I sold off the stock at a nice profit. And then I've never bought back into them again. <laughs> Were you like McDonald's? I mean, $350 instead of 350 billion. <laughs> no. I mean, I had thousands. You didn't make one and a half billion? No. I think at one point in time, I did have like 10,000 in stock in them. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. I bought in very low, but it, it grew up to that. Given how much you support them, you uh, probably should invest more. Oh, mm. Well, 10, I would 000. just say. You've probably invested 10,000 in your life in, in, in eating it. Yeah, in eating it. Yeah. I would just say in general, I went from eating there two to three times a week with my entire film crew. Yeah. Um, to we weren't going there at all. And it got to be to where I was having it once every third month. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, it's just like we we got, I mean, there's a point in time. Over COVID, is that what you're talking about? Well, um, over COVID, just like leading up to that stuff was just slightly changing. The food was still good, but like over COVID, it just, I could tell the ingredients weren't as good. Like, for example, if they were locked into a price where they could, they had to pay <laughs> X amount of dollars for beans and they're like, sweet. Well, the suppliers hurting for money, they're going to find ways to try to, you know, maybe slip in some of the uh, lesser quality to save themselves some money. So this is all hypothetical in that in that scenario. Either way, I still love Chipotle. I just, I don't eat out as much. I need, I want to save money. I don't want to just, I'm not going to Chipotle. My wife and I used to eat everything, you know, chips, sodas, dip, guac, everything, you know, for like 20 bucks. And now we can't walk out for like 40 some dollars. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's just like, at that point in time, it adds up so much that it's just not worth eating out. And um, I, I'm a fan of Chipotle. I hope that they, you know, continue because I feel like it is a healthy option. But I was I was a little disappointed, honestly. Speaking of lots of money, let's talk about funding for the uh, for Chipotle, the original funding. Yeah, please. Because um, one takeaway <clears throat> that I <laughs> that I have here from learning about Chipotle is it helps to have rich parents. Yes. Um, I, th- I think yes. there's, there's lots of Hit examples. That, there's lots of examples uh, of companies that we've talked about and we'll talk about where, you know, people get their initial seed money from rich family members, which why not? If you got Kudos. it, if you got it, that's a good way to go. And, and honestly, if you have the money, if you're the rich family member, you could invest in, in, you're going to invest it one way or the other. So like, 
<clears throat> not a lot of people are just like sitting on piles of cash. They, they want that money to work for them. So you're going to either invest it in the stock market, you're going to invest it in your own endeavors. But if you have a young entrepreneurial family member uh, that wants to do something big, they've, they, they can show you the validity of their business idea. Then, then why not? Why not? You know, like you're, you're no judgment. You're supporting that young entrepreneur. You're supporting the next generations of your family. It has literally changed the life of, you know, Steve Ells and, and obviously everybody in that Chipotle ecosystem. Changed yeah. our life because yeah. we, we eat it all the time. Well, not but, to mention a lot of his friends that he went to school with in culinary school are like on the main C-suite of people. Like, oh, is okay. that the right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a bitch, okay. yeah, yeah. Like CEOs, CEOs, yeah. CMOs, All the, the, in, CFO. He knows them, he trusts them, and then they get paid well, and they do well. But yeah, what were, what were the numbers? Do you remember? So initially, but his dad, he started his company. He needed some money. You don't know, have money to, to remodel a place. I mean, he did a lot of the work himself, so kudos to him. But he was able to borrow eighty to 85000 from his father, which back then is $150,000. That's great. We've never started like a company. Like the conversion would yes. have been one hundred fifty k. dollars hundred fifty dollars for today. I could start several businesses for $150,000. Right. And we've started like companies with $300 negative in a bank <laughs> account. So like we, you can do it. It does make it easier having a little bit of seed capital. What, well, at a certain point in time, he goes to his dad and said, look how many locations we have. Look how much money that his dad felt comfortable enough to invest 1.5 or 1.2 to $1.5 million. Like a lot. That's a lot of money. Like you can do a lot with one point. Two million dollars. Um, kudos to his dad for believing him. And his dad probably made out like a bandit. Yeah, that's the so, thing. Is like if you look at McDonald's and how well they did, you look at how well you did. That's that's kind of I guess the the other side to the point I'm making is that um, it's not just necessarily free money. Mm -mm. And a lot of times when entrepreneurs uh, get money like a hard money loan from family or from family friends or, or whatever, um, a lot of times it does come with interest. You know, there's strings well, and attached. There's a possibility of ruining that relationship forever. Yes, but um, a wise investor is not just going to just give away money to a young person to go start a business without, again, vetting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dad made a decision along the way, twice it sounds like, to give large uh, portions of money. And I assume the second one was so much larger, in part because they. You know, he he saw that it was a, a good investment, and you know who knows what that initial eighty five thousand dollar investment turned into. Maybe that funded maybe that funded the the million and a half that. Or well, million, if, if he was know, able 1. to make 2. a thousand burritos a day versus one hundred and seven, which mm -hmm. is what he needed to break even or to basically have a little bit of profit, they were making decent money. Um, overall, I'm I think curious. Stephen me... did a great job. I think he's known for having a well like rounded like knowledge of the food industry, but also a drive that really inspires a lot of people. And they seem to do pretty good on like promoting from within. So I really hope it was, it's Carissa, right? Yeah. I hope she got promoted up because she was wonderful. She did a great job. I don't know if she's a wonderful boss, but like from the outside looking in, everything was clean. The food tasted better than any other locations I've ever had. Since she's no longer there, that location actually, I would say went down 20%, 30%. So uh, as far as, taste and cleanliness. So, and uh, the, did the music go up 30%? Um, the music volume? I don't know. I think I'm just getting old and everything <laughs> seems loud. At a thousand burritos a day, assuming conservatively that we're talking 250 a burrito, $3 a burrito, which, you know, at that time, maybe it's reasonable. Maybe it's low. But with those numbers anyway, it's anywhere from 75 to 100,000 a month that, that he was generating at that one location, you know, selling That's that many really burritos. Well so like that's great. early on, you know, that's, that's pretty good. It's over a million dollar business. And that's, and that's just burritos. That doesn't count, you know, selling drinks or, you know, other additional items on the menu. So I know. it used to be like, I'll get a bowl. It's $9. And they're like, would you like a drink and some chips? I'm like, yep. They're like, that's 92, 92. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, oh. I, I will say that the chips are so good that I often don't get anything to dip them right. in. But when I do, it's the the hot queso. That's so good. So back in the mm. day, there used to be a trick that you could do at Chipotle. And I'm not certain you can do this this anymore. But if you were a burrito fan and you wanted a burrito, and then you wanted all this stuff on the burrito, but the, they wrapped that burrito up like just the fattest burrito. It's bulging. But I always noticed that that was still less food than if you were <clears> to get a bowl. 
you could get it. So what we would do is we'd go get a bowl, okay? Get everything we wanted piled up on top. And then I'd ask for two burritos wrapped in some foil. And like, they do like it. Like the tortilla. Yeah, the tortilla. Yes, excuse me, the tortilla. The tortilla. They right would I warm mean? up that tortilla, that tortilla, and then wrap it up for you and it was free. So what you would do is get two, sometimes almost three burritos worth out of one bowl. There's a bunch the of hacks same, out there. At I've the heard same people, price. Yeah. At the yeah. same price as a burrito. So I would do that all the time. I think since then they've actually started charging for that extra stuff. Okay. So anyways, it's still kind of worth it. Get a burrito. It's like a, uh, excuse me, a tortilla. It's a dollar or whatever it is. What's mm -hmm. nice about the bowl though, is that maybe you shouldn't, but like you can eat that while you're driving. You can, right. you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, like here we are eating it and it's not a huge mess. It's kind of nice. Well, speak for yourself. I've been belching in this microphone for the last hour. <laughs> you are a mess, but I mean, your food's not a mess. I know. Um, I just feel like this should this should be the way of the future uh, for a lot of things is like just healthier options. Um, I for personally sure. used to, whenever I'd go to a fast food restaurant, refuse to go through the drive-thru. I'd at least get my fat ass up, walk inside, oh, yeah. order my like if you're fat gonna food, eat. and then I'd eat it. All the way out, I felt better that I got up <laughs> off my fat ass. <laughs> Even though I mean, I'm I mean having, that makes some sense. I get yeah, it. Yeah, well, made you I'm, feel better. Yeah, when I'm having 1,800 calories worth in one meal, um, I I added it up one day uh, with my fitness pal. Uh, I went and I was like, I'm going to eat exactly what I would eat in one day, Excuse and I me. did. I think I got McDonald's for breakfast, and I got something unhealthy for lunch, and then for dinner I had McDonald's again, and I was just like. Oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> I don't stop this. And so I stopped eating so much McDonald's. That's, it was hard though, because it is um, convenient. It's, it's affordable. And that's a big difference. I think between uh, some of these fast food places and Chipotle, which, which fast food prices have gone up in general. And, mm -hmm. and I eat essentially no fast food, but it doesn't mean I don't want to because of the prices and the, the convenience, but it, it is a challenge. I think probably for Chipotle that, you know, they're, it's expensive to provide what they're providing people. Um, but people seem willing to pay it. Yeah. You know, I think what I take from this is <clears throat> sometimes you do need to align yourself with someone who just has the knowledge of how to do something. Who's to say that Chipotle wouldn't be the, the juggernaut that it is today. If it not paired up with McDonald's, the processes that they learned, the, the, how to scale a business properly and how to set yourself in a way that you're the one making, you know, good profit, how to go public. Maybe, uh, but also like strip down your offerings. Like, don't offer so much; it's hard to like properly let everybody know. I haven't thought about this with my wife's salon. Maybe we should just slim things up to where when you're looking at it, you're presenting that there's not so many options. No, like decision fatigue. There's no decision fatigue, and 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 also like what you do have. Focus in on the good ingredients. Focus in on a good service. And that's what I really pulled from this podcast. And I would encourage anybody else, like, look into him. You know, Stephen did a wonderful job. And sometimes it's about going against the narrative of, of, like, not even the narrative, but going against the grain of, like, well, you have to cut your costs and you have to have all these preservatives in your food. I think that people have become more aware and more conscious of, uh, you know, not, not just health, because that's one aspect of it, but, like, uh, environmental toxins. Like, my mm -hmm. wife talks yeah. about this stuff all the time. Your wife talks about this stuff all the time. Um, it's real stuff, man. Yeah. Just being aware of like awareness that I think people didn't have in years past. They didn't really either. They just simply didn't know at all or didn't think it to be a problem. But I think we've, we've seen over time that some of these household products, some of this, this the food that we eat, um, it, some of it isn't technically even food, but we call it, it, it like fits under that category, but like some of the, you know, ultra, um, sugary and sweet, basically what we ate last yeah. week, last week when we did this, all the candy. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you kind of have to choose nowadays, it seems like to have a, a truly healthy life, um, and be intentional about choosing products and choosing food that is going to be good for you. No, I agree. And I think Chipotle is, <clears throat> as far as fast food or fast casual goes, that's yeah. it's always going to be a good choice. Well, from from this is a perfect example. I've taken a Chipotle bowl, purchased it, uh, put it in my car, and I'm going about my day, and I forgot to actually eat the bowl. And then you go back the next day, and the food's rotted. Oh, yeah. You, you know, and you're like, well, It's a good sign, it's, though. It's a great sign. It's real food. Because have you ever seen that video of that woman who actually took that McDonald's burger 
and forgot about it and looked at it. I was like, this still looks good after a couple of weeks. She's like, or at least looks the same. It looks the same. Looks good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and she said, I'm just going to leave it here. And apparently left it for 20 years and it's never molded. It's never 20 years. Yeah. I'm going to actually pull this up. Like, cause I want to show this to you real quick. Um, I had no idea it was that long. Yeah. Let me, let me pull this up real quick. This person bought a meal from McDonald's and then left it in her closet for 24 years. After 24 years, the food never broke down or decomposed. French fries pretty much look like fries that just, you know, like fell on the floor of your car and you didn't find them for a month. The bread has never molded. As a matter of fact, it's not even cracked. It's pretty dry and brittle. But there's no mold on it. No mold and it never rotted at all. I'm surprised that's like crazy. bugs and critters didn't For get into reason. it. Well, that's the thing is why aren't bugs and critters wanting to eat it? Oh. So my the, my point is- Because they're smarter mm, than, than yes. us full-grown bugs and critters? Yeah. So a lot of it is, is that's why when, yeah, when I accidentally left that bowl in it and the ingredients started to break down and mold in, in the car, I'm like, this is actually healthier food. So whereas, unless you want to, you know, eat the hamburger, how much money- would you take to eat that burger from 24 years old? Like how much money would you be like, okay, I'll devour that entire I'd thing. I'd have to like see it in the flesh. I'd okay. have to like mm. try to like smell it and touch it and see what we were dealing with. But man, it'd like have to be a Like if someone offered you 10 grand, <clears throat> would you eat that no, burger? Okay, so no. no 10 grand, 20 grand. No, well, I'm talking like way, okay. way higher but than that. 150,000 cash tax-free, would you eat that burger? Do I have to eat it, digest it, send it on out the other side? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you... It, it's, can I like spit it out or vomit it up later? You have to gobble it and digest it. I'd have to see it up close. It, it'd have to be like 200 grand, I think for me, before I'd be like, yeah. Because like, there could be some serious side effects from that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh. Anyways... Um, <laughs> Your wife has such a gross stuff. She, like, she's just like, her face is just like the she's whole. She's like, this podcast this whole, has been noises. 200,000. <laughs> you wouldn't do it? No. I'm talking like, it'd be, have to be like a billion. A I mean, billion? A girl. Gluten and 24 year old. A McDonald's. billion? I need a person's leg for a billion. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> It's like I dice that up, let it sit for twenty four years, and chomp on that while watching TV. But you uh, won't Billy? wax someone's legs for less than ten grand. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, okay, that that scenario that seems like a weird way to throw that out there. Okay, they were having the conversation. They yeah, were like, "There's more to this." I feel like so they in, at the salon they were talking about pricing. And then we need to increase your business, some prices. Your, yeah, my your wife's business. salon. And they were talking about waxing. And they were talking about men coming in and getting waxing. And they decided they weren't going to do that unless someone specifically wanted in the salon to wax a male. Um, Because there's more to it. You have to move stuff. What are we talking about here? Waxing their private parts. Yeah. Okay. So don't talk about like. Yeah. But you have to. They apparently. Stop with the hand motions. So the girls were were telling me (laughs) about all the stuff that they have to do. I was like, how much are we charging for this? And they're like, oh, it looks like $95. I was like, that's not enough money. You guys are fine with like waxing people's privates for like 90 bucks. They're like, well, we charge women 80 bucks. And I'm just like, I wouldn't, I couldn't do it. And I'm like, you waxing people's butts for 80 bucks. And they're like, well, how much money would you do it for? Like, I was like, they're like a few hundred. I was like, no, no, I'm not even close. They're like, uh, they give it up to like 10,000 bucks. I was like, I'm telling you, I'm not looking at someone else's anus who I don't know and ripping the hair out. And they're like 10,000 bucks. You wouldn't do it. I'm like, I'm not doing it for a hundred grand. Like you'd really? have to, no. Hi, good to meet you. Spread your cheeks. Rip. Like I couldn't do it. I would barf everywhere. I would rather work an entire year, save all my money, and make that money before I would ever do that. This 20. is really interesting. We need okay, so we need to get both of our wives on, and we need we need to have the four of us, and maybe more, like a group, and we need to go through these scenarios because <laughs> it's inter- it's like surprising to me hearing the two of you. Talk she wouldn't need it for a billion, and I'm not waxing anybody's butt. Like I just can't. Like I'm actually surprised by both of those. Like, really? Yeah. Dave's like, I do both for five. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm more desperate. I don't know, but like, it's that, that's an interesting. Like, you know, all these different scenarios. It's interesting the girls were like, I don't believe. I was like, say. ladies, I can go make that money. I will go make that money before I'd ever just like ran some random dude why try to wax them all. I couldn't do it. I would just I would throw up. I would think if I, if you're going to wax me, you got to pay me money. Yeah, I know. Oh. That's, that's what I'm, that's where I'm at with it. And well, some of the girls that work for us, I think they, they got a kick out of making men have a lot of pain. <laughs> I really do. 
And one, one girl was even, this is, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut this out of the podcast probably. Probably not, mom, sorry. Um, <laughs> But one of the girls was telling me, she's like, hold on, I'm not sure I want to, well, <laughs> you need to cut uh, this out of my life. Okay. So one lady was telling you know me, she's like, say? when I was waxing, like men, men will come in and I'll tell them, get down on all fours. I'm like, first off, like, fuck, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrifying. And she's like, they always get a boner in the process. And she's uh, like, you this just is have your, to, this is your, one employee? of my employees. Um, and then she, she's like, sometimes you just have to make them move it out of the way for them. She's like, it ain't my job to control that. And then I'm just like traumatized the first off number one that they want that done <laughs> number two it somehow turns them on and then number three that you only charge 80 dollars <laughs> <laughs> i charge that much per hair oh, oh, oh okay this this chipotle if you ever watch this i'm sorry <laughs> that this podcast went this direction i chipotle's think i'm gonna be so pissed that we went yeah. from from we're gonna get uh, sued instead of being sponsored. Talking at all. about their food to the hair between the legs, which yeah. fortunately, However, what? the biggest one of the the biggest market for male Brazilians is male bodybuilders, and I bet you a male bodybuilder is probably eating Chipotle. Full circle. So, Thank you very much for tying that in. By m- male Brazilians, do you mean like Brazilian males, or do you mean a Brazilian wax? The term for a full nether region wax, front to back, is a Brazilian wax. Got it. The stories I've heard would traumatize you. And I am traumatized from some of them. Um, I might be a little traumatized from this whole conversation. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I was not emotionally ready for this. Like today <laughs> I came in like prepared to eat a bunch of Chipotle, which I did. Uh, I was not ready for it to derail into yeah. the last five minutes. I just want to say to Chipotle, <laughs> thank you. For helping me add on an extra 20 pounds onto my body because Lord knows I've eaten so much Chipotle that uh, my 30s to my 40s, I had so much. I know a lot of my weight came from that. So if it wouldn't have been Chipotle, I'd probably be another 20 pounds heavier. It is a lot of calories. I will say, though, that is one of the nice things about a Chipotle meal is like it's always satisfying. Yeah. Like for I most people. I usually can people, take it in two meals. It takes two meals yes. for Yes. For most people that are, like, I'll get a, a double portion of rice usually. Mm. But I would say for most people, it's a pretty satisfying meal. Yeah. Or more than they can handle in one sit. One I mean, sit it's been down, a big but. part of our lives. Um, Chipotle is my life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> for all of us. Yeah. I guess what I'll do is I'll just end it with that. <laughs> Thank you for that inspiration, Roy. <laughs> Anything Love else it, you want to say? No, I'm I, I fully relate with our friend Roy. Yeah. Chipotle has been our life. This was delicious. I'm gonna now eat my chips where I can crinkle and chomp. That was sort of ASM ASM. Yeah. yeah, sorry for the belching. And Irene, especially back there, she's got a good, you know, headphones, and so she felt that one in her soul. I also heard some gut rumbling. But yeah, I wasn't gonna that was out totally me. I'm rumbling over here. Are you? Yeah. Has this meal been hard on you? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Let me, most of it's coming from last night, that birthday party. I've been on a very uh, yeah. strict, no sugar, no it carbs. Your, yeah. and <clears throat> it was your son's? My son's birthday party. Birthday, which was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Anyways, Chipotle, you're awesome. Um, lower your prices and I'll start coming back. Do it. Peace out. The thoughts and opinions on this show do not reflect those of our advertisers, employers, or other affiliates. The content should not be considered legal or financial advice. The Chasing Mountains podcast is a production of Chasing Mountains Media.